welcome back to this interactive session series week 2 uh, for the course of uh, traffic engineering so the course instructor is dr bhargav mitra from iit kharagpur and myself uh, suman ganguli i am a research scholar at iit kharagpur right so as we did good evening so as we did in the last class so we will start with describing what is the topic that has been covered in week 2 right so first uh, we will like like it, it's a kind of summary so once we are done with the summary then we will go to the question and answer session right in the later half of this uh, interactive session and uh, in 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 any case if you have any difficulty or any queries regarding anything you can ask me directly right uh, you can chat and or you can unmute yourself and then maybe uh, you can talk as well right so let us start so uh, these are the contents that are covered so starting with so this is module b right so the uh, the concept that it starts the module is the concept of traffic stream so what do you mean by traffic stream so basically a traffic stream is a place where all the elements like vehicles and drivers especially they are interact with each other as well as they are interacting with the different roadway elements right whatever present on the roads so see if you remember in the last week we was we were talking about traffic uh components right so there are four traffic components the driver vehicles then the roadways and the traffic control devices and obviously also the general environment but if you remember we talked about that uh, vehicles as well as drivers those are not in control of traffic engineers right so we cannot control the behavior and the characteristics of vehicles as well as the uh drivers who are driving the vehicles so because driver are displaying a large variation in their behavior uh suppose let's take an example of uh, a driver maybe who is young and he is speeding right on the roads uh, on the other hand there is a old driver right he is going slow because uh, his focus is mainly on safety but uh, the young driver has his adrenaline rush right so because of that adrenaline pump maybe he wants to go faster huh, on the road so you see uh, due to so that's one aspect there are uh, many other aspect as well so because of this drivers are basically displaying large variability in their driving behavior right so if you uh, if you see a traffic stream and if you see a couple of vehicles so whoever the driving those vehicle they may show a large variety of behavior so that's why it is very important to control their behavior somehow right so then also there are uh, vehicle heterogeneity that is present so what do you mean by vehicle heterogeneity here so here vehicle heterogeneity basically refers to the one thing is static and as well as are uh, the uh, operating characteristics so what do you mean by static characteristics maybe the length of the vehicle the width so see if you see uh, the uh, length and width of a car is very different than the length and width of a motor vehicle like two wheelers right and it is then again different from uh, for heavy vehicles like bus trucks right so because of that traffic stream managing a traffic stream will be very difficult so it is a heterogeneous uh, thing that we need to control as a traffic engineer right so then we talked about the traffic facility so we already said that traffic stream consist of vehicles and they are flying on the roads they are interacting with the different elements of roads so now if we come to the traffic facilities that is the roadway facilities so not in terms of geometric design but in terms of the facility right traffic in terms of traffic how the facility has been designed so uh, there are majorly two uh, two kinds of traffic facilities one is uninterrupted traffic facility second one is the interrupted traffic facility so what do you mean by uninterrupted traffic facility 
so basically uninterrupted means the traffic won't be interrupted by any other means at that particular facility or particular stretch of a highway so now uh, what do you mean by that so suppose uh, i have this kind of facility which is totally segregated you can say and it is like no other divide division and those things are there there might be some kind of margin it may present or may not present but majority of the cases it is uninterrupted so it can flow uh, means the vehicle can uh, reach up to its maximum speed but it is you do not uh, means remember even in this facility there could be demand could be high so there may be more number of vehicles that is flying on this particular stretch of road even it is in un, not interrupted by anything not interrupted by this kind of uh, any intersection or different vehicles but still the demand on that particular stretch could be high during peak hour let's say so in that case also although it is a uninterrupted facility so you might think that okay it is under uninterrupted facility so maybe the uh, there may not be any congestion right so no this is not true so there can be congestion if, if, even if the traffic demand itself is uh, very high right so it has to be remembered so it is a facility it is not about less demand the face how the facility is working so what do you mean by interrupted facility so if you see any signal any uh, any intersections with signals so majority of the urban roads are interrupted facilities not uninterrupted but majority of the national highways or state highways in most cases they are uninterrupted facilities so they are designed so that vehicle can travel faster through this through those uh, roads right or facilities i i would rather say the facilities so the third third one is the traffic stream parameters so first we talked about traffic stream then we comes to the facilities what are the facilities uh, then we come to the traffic stream parameter so there are majorly two type two kinds of parameters macroscopic and microscopic so see the name itself is saying it is macro macro means big micro means small right so in traffic sense uh, there are majority of the cases the average speed of a traffic stream so as i said earlier so a traffic a stream in a st in a traffic stream there could be many vehicles right four vehicles 10 vehicles 12 vehicles if you consider a particular stretch there may be hundreds and thousands of vehicles right so if i say the average speed of the particular traffic stream so that's a macroscopic parameter it's not a microscopic parameter right so why it is macroscopic so it is not talking about the individual speed of the vehicle so suppose Uh, one vehicle is traveling at a speed of 20 another vehicle traveling at a speed of 40 another vehicle traveling at a speed of 60 so i am not talking about 20 40 60 i am talking about 60 plus 40 plus 20 how much 120 by 3 right that's what i am talking about 40 40 km per hour it's the average speed ha huh. if if i take simple average then what is another kind of microscopic traffic parameter is the density so density means density of traffic stream so it is defined as number of vehicles that can be crossed suppose it's a 1 km road suppose it may be any one unit of road so now what are what are the number of suppose there are 20 vehicles at a particular 1 km road at a particular time specified traffic condition and time so this 20 is like 20 vehicles per kilometer that is called the density so how many uh, vehicles can be accommodated in per unit length of the road at a specified road and traffic condition so why at a given road and traffic condition because it may vary place to place it may vary it may vary even within the place during different times it may vary right so it is the density right so then third parameter is flow so what is flow flow means suppose this is the road so if i if i want to see that how many vehicles are crossing at a particular time i uh, suppose 
in one hour how many vehicles are passing through a particular point right at a at a given specified uh, road and traffic condition so if there are 20 vehicles or suppose 30 vehicles are passing per hour so then it is the capacity or it may be the flow right so generally the maximum number of uh, per unit hour if the maximum number of flow has been obtained that is called the capacity for a particular stretch of road but otherwise it is called a flow right if it is not maximum then it is simply flow so we have defined that micros macroscopic parameter are mainly of three types that is the speed of the traffic stream density of the traffic stream and the third one is the flow of the traffic stream right so then let's come to the mic mic microscopic parameters microscopic traffic parameters so why it is called microscopic already i said it is micro means it is small or it is dealing with the individual vehicle properties or individual vehicle prior properties so as i already said that speed of an individual uh, vehicle can be considered as a microscopic parameter right we are not talking about the whole traffic stream what is the average speed we are saying each vehicle is traveling at what speed so that is called the microscopic parameter now what are the different other microscopic parameters one is called the space headway space headway so what do you mean by space headway so suppose there are these are the two vehicles so if i say the center to center what is the gap so what is the gap in terms of distance right so suppose vehicle is traveling and at a particular instance time instance we see that the gap is 30 meters suppose between two vehicles so that is called the space headway between those vehicles so it is see it is dealing with the space headway of two vehicles right these are the two vehicles not the traffic stream but the two vehicles pair 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 and it may also change right so you could argue that okay i will take the averages and i can take the averages i can take each each pair values and i can take the averages but that doesn't make sense because what is makes sense that how it changes how the interaction changes as two vehicles are moving forward so then what is the time headway right so time headway is nothing but the what is the elapsed time right between two vehicles so distance headway and time headway are different things so time headway is very sensitive so suppose your a vehicle is traveling at a speed of 20 km per hour and then b vehicle is traveling at a uh, suppose uh, at a speed of 30 km per hour so if b vehicle is traveling at a speed of 30 km per hour so see the time headway will constantly reduce because it is it will trying to catch up right so it will constantly trying to it will reduce right over the period of time so these are the macroscopic and microscopic traffic parameters and these are very essentials for uh, different kinds of things right uh, so if you want to uh, like like if you remember last class we are talking about the level of service a to f right or quality of service of a particular traffic facility right so in those cases how to know that what is the how you can judge the performance so performance you can judge using this density as well as traffic flow as well as speed sometimes right so these are the fundamental parameters uh, based on what you can judge how your uh, particular traffic stream or particular a particular road how it is operating is it operating uh, at a good or means at a good condition or it is operating in a bad condition right so these are very important so then uh, then uh, here we are considering more about the macroscopic parameters first so these macroscopic speed which is the average speed of a traffic stream so basically they are if you see there are temporal variation that exist so imagine there is a road and you see at that particular suppose you take a road of stretch of 500 meters so 
so see if you see the in the morning if you uh, if you try to estimate what is the average speed of the uh, traffic stream that particular stretch obviously so suppose you find it that okay in the morning uh, suppose uh, maybe let's say 6 to 8 in the morning you find that okay 50 is the average so if you see that 8 to 10 most probably in most cases because of the peak hour and if i if we consider urban as well as non-urban also it may be true sometimes but urban it is surely it is true so it will go down to maybe 30 right so even uh, see maybe after 12 uh, because the peak hour has gone it may be it may again reaches to 50 or sometimes maybe more depending on the traffic congestion so if you see temporally means with time it is varying it is not fixed so for a particular road it is just varying right so based on uh, uh, so it is varying so now see what are the so so what do you think is the primary influential factors so what is the primary what is the main factor here so same same if we consider same stretch then you see the main contributing factor is traffic flow because your flow is varying suppose you have too many number of vehicles so automatically uh, there are congestion is existing on that particular stretch and also your vehicle speed will go down right so primary factor is v but generally uh, in case of most of the transportation engineering cases we are considering v by c because if your itself your capacity is less for a particular stretch of road even if your uh, number of flow I means the number of vehicles or the flow that is very less but still uh, it is not it will not operate at the uh, at a very good condition right so that's why primary influencing factor is uh, v by c uh, then what what are some secondary influential factors right so it it depends but there could be many factors even the vehicle performance and those things could come under this secondary influential factor as well right so but the primary is this rest of the maybe sometimes weather so you see morning weather is something different maybe uh, in the uh, uh, suppose uh, in the evening there is raining right so due to the rain your vehicle speed will go down so those kinds of things are also may influence right but the primary and thing is vyc so now also we are seeing the spatial variation spatial variation mean it is the, your speed is varying along the route so suppose you take some uh, here suppose you take the, this is the road this is one segment segment one this is segment two and this is segment three so if you see the average speed and suppose these are the equal segments right see even if they are equal segments so suppose uh, the average speed is actually varying this three location it most of the cases it won't be same but it will depend on many factors why it won't be same so why so see this is called longitudinal that's what we are talking we will come after we describing this we will come to the transverse as well as the directional spatial variation so why so suppose maybe your vehicle width is less itself your vehicle width uh, sorry road width is less right so if your road width is less so here suppose it is 7 meter here it is 5 meter here it is 6 meter so itself your capacity of the road is less so there will be less number of vehicles that the that the particular segment can operate uh, can accommodate so if it is so then automatically your speed will go down right when we transition from uh, uh, this uh, road segment 1 to road segment 2 right so this is called the longitudinal so there are, could be many other factors like if uh, this is uh, this is this segment is having no signal and segment 2 is having some signal so it is it will incur some delay because of the signal right so there could be many other factors as well so now why the transverse so suppose transverse means what transverse means suppose there are two lanes this is a lane 1 and this is a lane 2 so even if your this stretch is only one this a or a, I, I can say a so this is the stretch so if you see here the what is the speed and here what is the speed the speeds may not be same the average speed i am talking about so why so sometimes you see in the urban expressways particularly 
there uh, there are some fast moving lane there are some slow moving lane so because of that it may be different because something is fast moving and something is slow moving right so another thing may be uh, suppose there is a unknown driver right who comes to a particular new location so now he don't know uh, where to go uh, he want to check every uh, whatever the sign post are there then he want to move forward so automatically his speed will go down right and there is a tendency that it will come he will be on the left lane right because majority of our traffic is following the left uh, left uh, lane uh, traffic rule right instead of uh, right lane which is uh, predominantly observed in some western countries right so because of that your transverse uh, speed difference would be there so what about the directional so as we uh, already discussed in the previous session as well that uh, whenever we want to go from home to our work location in the morning so that direction your traffic volume will be very high right and at the same time in the opposite direction there could be very less volume of vehicles which are traveling uh, due to obvious reasons because may, uh, most of the people are going to the cbd area or the city center area not coming back coming whoever is coming back uh, those traffic volume is uh, very less uh, compared to the Uh, this uh, working people uh, volume whoever is going to the work right so because of that there could be directional uh, the directional uh, volume split as well as uh, your uh, speed will be less whenever uh, you are going to work because of the uh, too much of vehicle demand uh, there could be other things as well like like uh, even see there could be like like whenever i am going from uh, going to work maybe at that direction uh, my capacity of road is very high means the width is uh, more and uh, whenever i am coming back uh, for that road maybe suppose imagine it's a uh, divided uh, carriageway right like this uh, so let me draw so suppose it's a median suppose it's a median and it's a divided carriageway and suppose uh, it is a two lane as well as it is a two lane so suppose here the width is 7 meters and here maybe the width is 5 meters only so this is this direction and this is maybe this direction so due to this also there could be speed fluctuations right even if your vehicle uh, demand may be the same right so there could be many factors which is affecting the speed variations temporal as well as spatial so now modal variations what do you mean by modal variations so as i already talked that in india uh, uh, it is not about it is in any road is like like if you take any road it is not only one type of vehicle is flying it is not that only cars are flying so if you see in the western countries there are motorways wherever the only mode that is operating is the car right different varieties of car but predominantly car but here if you see car bus even cycle rickshaw sometime e rickshaw even cycles because we do not have any bicycle lanes so because of that because obviously they are uh, operating characteristics means the speed and acceleration due to the vehicle engine capacity it is different so their speeds will be different it is obvious right this modal variations so it, it do exist in the roads so then we come to the mean variance relationship so now uh, what we are we are till now talked about is the variations so how to capture the speed variation so suppose uh, you see that um, uh, there are uh, there are uh, variations right speed in speed variation so if i within an hour i see that okay Uh, maybe the average speed for each 15 minutes it is 20 then 25 then maybe 15 and so on and so forth so if an if it is varying so how to in mathematical terms how to quantify it right so sub we can take the average so 20 25 60 and then we take 20 plus 25 plus 16 by 3 so simply you can take the average so that is called the mean so but if you see there is also a variance because suppose you imagine two scenarios one is your 20 25 and 16 another scenario is 5 25 
and 30. So suppose the mean value is same in both cases. Let's say the mean value is same. So even if your mean value is same, so if you see it is ranging from 5 to 30. So your difference is 25. In that range it is varying. But here it is varying in suppose 15 and 20 and 25. So it is varying at a range of 10 only. Right? And it is varying at a range of 25. So if there are that much of variation, so you should consider that variability into account. Otherwise what will happen? Uh, you design your road with a suppose uh, with a suppose a speed uh, uh, mean speed of 15 but sometimes your vehicle speed could be 30 but here if you see sometimes your speed may be uh, here may be 30 sometimes maybe 5 and here it it will revolve around 15 and 25 so there are much smaller variations so there is a less chance that your road segment will fail if you design it for uh, considering the mean right so then the important thing is to consider the variability as well so that's why mean variance relationship is very important and in this case we actually use coefficient of variation which is standard vari standard deviation of the uh, particular sample of speed divided by mean so that it can relative relative to mean what is the standard variation right? because suppose your mean is very less your standard deviation is very less right suppose your mean is very high and standard deviation is very high so if you do not consider the mean so it's like this suppose your mean is 5 and your standard deviation is uh, maybe suppose 3 and other scenario is your mean is 25 and your standard deviation is 20 so if you consider if you compare with the mean because this is the this is the mean so your only you have five variations and here you only have two variations so it is nothing much nothing sort of too much right so based on the mean if your variation is very less so that's what we want to consider because sometimes it may happen your variation seems very large but in absolute terms but in relative terms it is not large so you have to consider mean as well as the variance to capture that scenario uh, in a representative manner right? so then we comes that how to capture the average speed so we were talking about only the macroscopic average speed only but how to capture this uh, speed and how many types of speeds are there right so there are majority are two types of speeds are available one is time mean speed other one is space mean speed so what is the difference between the time mean speed so time mean speed is what suppose at a particular instance you see there are five vehicles so if you just simply arithmetic average you take it is the time mean speed but what about space mean speed so what about space so you have to consider unit length in space right so then you have to see how many vehicles are there then you need to consider the effect of space and then you need to calculate space mean speed right so generally or i think it is uh, given in details in your ppt as well so i may not uh, go into discuss all the things but uh, if someone is having some uh, means uh, queries regarding this then maybe i will go to deep otherwise what i can say that space mean speed is a better measure than time mean speed since it's taking account the uh, the space as well right and also the value generally the space mean speed is generally uh, having less value than time mean speed because uh, see uh, if you remember as i already told that in a particular traffic stream so vehicles are not going or not traveling at the same speed because of the driver behavior someone at a particular road stretch in the same or specified traffic condition someone is uh, traveling at a speed of maybe 30 km per hour and some other vehicles maybe same kind of vehicles he, he may or he or she may travel at a speed of uh, suppose 20 km uh, per hour right so these are variations some may be fast moving some may be slow moving so we need to uh, so what we did in time mean speed we want to we do not want to capture those uh, 
or effects of slow moving vehicles so we are just saying that okay uh, this many number of vehicles and these are uh, the speeds and then at a time instant if these are the speeds so we will want to uh, average it out right but in case of space mean speed we want to consider that who is fast moving who is slow moving if it is slow moving then then their number of vehicles per unit length at a particular time will be very high suppose there are uh, two kinds of vehicles one is traveling at a speed of 50 km per hour other set of vehicles are traveling at a speed of 25 km per hour so if you now analyze a particular segment of suppose 1 km you suppose you may see that there are only two three vehicles of fast moving but there are five to six vehicles of slow moving vehicles so you want to give more weight to slow moving vehicles because there are more vehicles at a particular time or at a particular at a particular uh, length and at a particular instant of time right so that's why space mean speed is more realistically captures the scenarios uh, and it, it is even more important in indian roads because we have uh, different uh, modes of vehicles right not one two modes but the many modes so it is even more important in our case right so then uh, then okay so how do you uh, how do you actually in the field how do you want to uh, take uh, or measure the average speed so you can go to the field you can use some kind of radar gun either uh, what is a radar gun you just uh, point the radar gun to the vehicle uh, by standing on the side of the road and radar gun will reflect his uh, radar gun will reflect his frequency and it will come back right so it is actually working on the uh, principle of doppler effect so based on that we can actually measure that okay this vehicle is traveling at a approximate speed of 50 km per hour right so based on that we can uh, we can take suppose uh, a sample of 50 or 100 vehicles uh, within a period of maybe one hour or one and a half hour right so so your your, your population may be suppose uh, uh, suppose uh, at a particular hour maybe 300 vehicles have crossed at a particular stage right at a particular direction so but maybe you are able to capture only 100 vehicles so 300 is called the population that the total population of vehicles which are traveling at a particular stretch but 100 is the sample size that you have collected right because you, you it is not possible for you to capture each vehicles because you are using a radar gun so obviously you will miss something because you will point out a radar gun or maybe someone other uh, some 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 of your friends or colleagues maybe uh, stand by your side and maybe uh, noting down the speed of the vehicles as well as the vehicle type right so that is called the sample of that uh, of that uh, particular uh, uh, means uh, the sample size right so then uh, suppose uh, suppose uh, uh, how do you uh, suppose you uh, now you conducted survey at three but three different locations right even in the same location during different times of the day so now you want to know that are those uh, average space sp speeds at that different three periods suppose 8 to 9 9 to 10 9 10 to 11 there are three uh, three periods right time periods so are they significantly different so uh, do you want to know that okay is it that 9 to 10 the due to the peak cover it is uh, very less and then it is uh, because if you directly take the average one value right suppose you are taken only one value so you cannot use any statistical measure to test it that suppose it may happen that uh, that average may get influenced by some slower vehicles or some, sometimes some faster vehicles so you want some more samples right so even uh, for that 8 to 9 time period you want to take suppose 5 days you have conducted survey first day second day third day fourth day and fifth day so based on that you 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 got a sample size right of 8 to 9 then 9 to 10 you got the sample size of this 5 days then for 10 to 11 you also got the sample size of uh, those 5 days right so based on that now we want to check statistically that how your is it that your means as well as the variances are significantly different because if they are significantly different then you can you can say that okay uh, maybe uh, suppose you can make these decisions like uh, maybe uh, 
at that particular instance because these are significantly different and the average and uh, that coefficient of variation value is very high so maybe uh, you want to check that if signal is causing the problem or if the demand is very high so how to reduce that demand at the particular time period because otherwise uh, there would be congestion on roads right so maybe you want to check right or maybe you want to develop some kind of simulation model so if you want to develop some kind of simulation model maybe you want to check uh, that how those uh, mean and variances are there and you want to put it right either either if it is not significantly different you want to combine those uh, time periods or if it is not you may not want to combine those time periods you may want to uh, see that each hour uh, how, what is the performance of traffic suppose what is the level of service of that particular road at at which time period it is very bad and at which time period it is very good and why right so this kind of analysis you may want to do suppose so for that basically i will not tell you the state test what so suppose i i am just mentioning it because it is there in the ppt so uh, for significant differences in means so basically we just uh, take a normal sample and then we want to check that how uh, your uh, measured value and how your these are value varying right based on the two samples and for variances we usually use f test right so maybe you can refer to the ppt for uh, better uh, insights of this uh, things right so then another thing in statistics that is important what do you mean uh, do you mean by group sample and ungrouped sample so now i already talked about the population as well as the samples right so now i want to say that what is a grouped sample versus a ungrouped sample so suppose your sample uh, size is very less 10 12 vehicles so you do not want to group them so what do you mean by group so suppose i got some 150 samples right sit 50 vehicles along with the speeds so now what i want to do I, suppose i want to do like this suppose 20 to 30 km per hour there are five vehicles in this range now 30 to 40 this vehicles 40 to 50 this much vehicles means this the speed range as well as the frequency so it is called the grouped sample and why we did this because if the sample size is very high so for each individual observation it doesn't make sense so that's why we want to group them and we want to do the uh, same whatever we are doing right so this is called uh, group sample versus the ungrouped sample so now we want to also see that if you measure the speed in field if you measure suppose uh, the mean and the variance and other things right so suppose you you have some two three samples and you got that okay mean of the sample is uh, 20 km per hour and the variation is 10 km per hour suppose variation is measured by standard deviation right which is i think is known to you variance of standard deviation these are i think uh, these concepts i think i hope uh, you will be knowing right so now so i want to check that whether uh, based on that i could say that whether uh, my sample is are following some kind of distribution so what are the type of distribution it could be a normal distribution it could be a pearson distribution it could be a log normal distribution it could be any type of distribution so why why i want uh, to check that because see in the mathematics and in the distributions so there are many uh, theories so suppose uh, for normal distribution there are many properties right so if it is a normal distribution you can assume the speed uh, your modal speed is this your mean speed is this your this is this so if your range is this your standard deviation range is this so there are many much much more insights are there so if we could say that our speed sample is following or at least nearly following the ran, ran, suppose normal distribution right so it will help us to analyze so we will take some uh, samples and we will try to see whether it is following some kind of distribution if it is follows uh, then we can use it for different purposes suppose you want to uh, build a simulation model as i mentioned earlier so 
So simulation model, you, you may want to select that okay, speed is following normal distribution, the rest of the things you do not need to enter. So if you say that you, you give just mean and variation, uh, mean and variance and you say that my speed is following uh, a normal distribution. So now based on that automatically uh, it will create vehicles uh, who will travel uh, such that it will uh, follow a normal distribution. So, uh, so actually it is you can say or in other words that it is mimicking your field condition and that's what we want. We want to mimic the field conditions because even if we want to check that what is the traffic flow, what is the other thing, so we want to mimic the traffic conditions, right. So uh, there are usually there are two, three things that you need to check. First maybe some kind of uh, uh, chi-square check you can do, then graphical check also you can do and some numerical checks are also there, right. So for I think for normal distribution it is there in the PPT. Uh, but for other distributions it is not mentioned but if you want I think you can refer to the references so we actually uh, I think uh, uh, in one of those uh, reference book you may find some other uh, how to how to uh, do uh, the uh, checking of uh, distributions for other kind of distributions for this speech measurement. Ah, so here whatever we are saying that okay numerical graphical and chi square there it is actually applicable for normal only right and there could be some kind of other checks for log normal and other kind of distributions right which may want to you if you want you can you can read the book right so then actually we are coming to another so uh, so till start to this point we were talking about only the speed and particularly the macroscopic traffic speed right which is the uh, speed and then the second parameter of macroscopic parameter is the traffic volume right because uh, for a facility suppose traffic volume is 2000 so it's a macroscopic parameter it is not saying uh, key, not a, like it is not a property of microscopic anything right it is a overall at a particular uh, uh, particular stretch uh, this many vehicles are present or facility this many vehicles are uh, traveling that is called the traffic volume right so uh, traffic volume can be expressed in many terms first is annual average daily traffic so basically what happens because uh, there are fluctuations in monthly like this suppose January, February, March there are fluctuations as well as summer and winter right so winter you see generally our traffic is generally higher so because so if if you go to the field at a particular season suppose summer and you take some two three days of data so actually it might not represent those variations because you are uh, you are just capturing this average but the same uh, so so if this is same facility uh, may in, uh, may encountered more traffic during the winter so whatever you design the road for suppose you want to uh, you want to uh, decide the road uh, thickness right not thickness sorry road width right geometric features so based on the that how many maximum traffic volume are uh, passing through the road. So if you do this uh, traffic survey in summer, then it will surely fail in winter. So you will see the uh, traffic congestion and those things are happening. So your design is not rational basically, right? So you want to see that how these are uh, actually, you have to account for the winter traffic as well, right? As well as different months. So best, so for that we are just using ADT that is called annual average daily traffic, right? So it is just an average. So if you take 365 days throughout data and if you want to average it out, then whatever the volume is, uh, that can be that you can say that that is my volume. So now one thing uh, that you can ask that. Uh, so you are uh, talking about not maximum traffic, you are talking about the average traffic. So see, so maximum traffic, it may occur, but in most of the cases, it may not be present on the roads. 
so if we are doing uh, designing a road for that so we might actually over assess our uh, traffic and we might end up uh, putting more money for building a road which is actually not required at that particular time right so that's why we, we just take the average right in most of the cases or maybe sometimes median not the average but the median average so then annual average weekday traffic so see there is a variation in weekday and weekend right this is weekday and this is weekends so why because saturday sunday we do not actually see much traffic so we see this weekday pattern so this is also for 365 days but considering only the weekdays sometimes it is also uh, good to take the weekday traffic because uh, it might give you some rational results because it is only uh, considering the weekday traffic where your traffic volume tends to be high right so then it is called the average daily traffic so so in spite of the importance of add in most of the times we end up calculating this add instead of add why because it may not be feasible because see for the traffic volume either you need to establish some traffic control points throughout the year otherwise you need to install camera and monitor it throughout the year so both of those things are uh, means uh, it is not sometimes feasible and it is very difficult then maybe we need to spend lots of money for getting this that thing only right so what we usually do we will take we will do the survey for 5 or 7 days in a particular season and we will calculate the average daily traffic that is called the add and we multiply it with some factor right to get our add so how we got those factors so basically uh, previously indian road congress along with morth that is ministry of uh, road transport and highways they have conducted some kind of uh, pilot studies to come up with uh, some uh, factors right some adjustment factors so right now we are just using those factors to uh, calculate this uh, add right so our work is less because we already have a factor and it is fairly representative right so then this is same thing is the annual weekday traffic it is only considering considering the weekdays not the weekends right for the similar purpose so the, we are talked about the entire 24 hour volume right now uh, till now what we talked about is the 24 hour traffic volume so after that we are talking about the hourly volumes so even if you plot a 24 hour volume like this 0th hour 1th hour 2 and dot 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 uh, 24 it will see you will see some kind of fluctuations right uh, so hourly fluctuations are there and you will see maybe some evening peak or sometimes some morning some one hour peak will be there due to obvious reasons because we are over traveling to work right so it is essential to consider those hourly volumes So suppose you are, you want to design a road considering ADT, which is a 24 hour measures, and you use some kind of adjustment factor to come up with ADT. Now you see during the peak hour, your or uh, your design service volume or your capacity is not sufficient because you you considered the whole traffic volume and you took the average, so it is less. But at certain point, it is very high in either in the morning or in the evening. so because of that you want to actually see that what is that peak at least right so then only you will uh, you can do a rational design so that your uh, uh, your uh, traffic uh, your uh, capacity of road is sufficient to accommodate the uh, increase in travel demand during the peak hours hmm? so this is a factor to capture that it is called the directional a uh, directional or directional hourly volume hmm. so how you calculate this we want to use add which is add into some kind of factor right adjustment factor from irc or morth based on the latest guidelines and then uh, this is considering some directional factor as well as some peak hour factor so k is called the peak hour factor peak hour factor means 
means it is considering that uh, what is the peak right because we want to capture so some factor right that we have to capture and directional means for a particular direction also as i have said that for basically for morning peak or evening peak we won't find that morning peak as well as evening peak is occurring on the same direction in most of the cases it will occur at the opposite direction right like if morning you will find in the in one direction in the evening you will find in another direction right so that's why this kd k cross d into a dt it will give you a directional uh, design uh, basically uh, directional design hourly volume which generally we use for designing of road right finally that we actually use so now uh, we now talked about the hourly volume so suppose this is a hourly volume for 1 hour and this is 15 minutes 15 minutes 15 minutes and so on 15 minutes right so it's a 2 hour 1 2 3 4 4 suppose four interval are there 4 into 15 minutes is peak hour suppose evening peak hour we are talking about so suppose this is 60 minutes so we actually capture this right ddhb in ddhb we capture this but we did not see that even in this we are seeing a peak so now for that 15 minutes particular this 15 minutes your uh, congestion will be very high and because once the congested situation starts actually it's propagates so uh, so if you remember if you uh, i don't know i think it is there in your third module that how uh, congestion and queuing propagates in the next module which is shocking shock wave and queuing even for a small disturbance small period of time disturb if the disturbance happens it actually after 2 hours also sometimes its effects is there it effect is present so because of that we cannot uh, we cannot uh, neglect this uh, this 15 minutes peak now you can say similarly that for the 15 minutes also we may found we, we can say that uh, during each minute it is varying uh, absolutely true if you uh, if you can have some kind of fine tune devices and if you want to capture it you will see that actually whatever i am saying or you are visualizing it's true but generally based on the previous research studies what we found that generally less than 15 minutes the traffic volume less than 15 minutes it is not too much of varying it is varying in a particular range it is not too much the variation is very less or it is within a range it is statistically not different it is statistically almost same so because 15 minutes is the statistically stable stable time period so generally in most of the cases say whatever in traffic engineers do they are using 15 minutes traffic volume for design purposes right so for that we want to use peak hour factor right it's a factor so suppose your v60 that is your peak hour suppose this ddhb in peak hour v is this so how to capture this p h f peak hour factor so suppose if we consider 15 minute analysis period period as we as i mentioned so suppose this is 60 total analysis period by your actual time period what is the your uh, statistically stable time period into maximum flow in t15 whatever suppose you have 4 15 minutes periods and you are finding that at a particular 15 minute period your a uh, traffic volume is highest so take that traffic volume and this basically 4 4 into t15 t15 max i can say it is max and it is also v60 max so it is called your peak hour factor right so now this v60 was previously ddhb equal to ddhb now your ddhb is what 4 into t15 into p p h p that is your new uh, ddhb right because you want to capture this 15 minute traffic volume as well right so that's why your if you see your your this volume will increase right some 
at based on uh, peak cover factor value your uh, this may be increased so now you see suppose uh, in 16 suppose in 1 hour 100 vehicles are crossing at a particular route right and suppose uh, in 15 minutes and that 100 vehicles only passing in 115 minutes right and rest of the 315 minutes or 15 minutes interval no vehicles are crossing so now what what is the scenario scenario is v60 is 100 this is 4 and t50 is 100 so what is this value this value is 1 by 4 so it is the lowest value it is called 0 0.25 and it is the lowest value right because your every whatever your traffic volume is it is actually passing through one 15 minute period and rest of the 45 period uh, period it is empty right so another scenario could be ki there is no variation right so suppose uh, there are 100 vehicles here also suppose there are 4 by 100 means 25 so for each 15 minutes there are 25 25 25 25 right so now what is your this ratio so 4 is in the denominator and 15 is your 25 because there is equal uh, 15 minutes uh, vehicle volume and then it is 100 so now you will see it is also 1 so uh, the maximum value of phk is 1 and the minimum value is 0.25 that's how it came right we cannot reduce your phk value to 0 and because of that 4 into 1 suppose 4 right so then you want to use some kind of peak cover factor suppose some value and some 15 periods volume is there and 4 into phk now you got your new dth okay. so that's how you calculate so now we end our discussion of macroscopic traffic parameters now we came to the microscopic so these are uh, not everything is microscopic although this density is there but maybe we can talk to this this is microscopic so I already mentioned that what is time headway, time headway is the time gap between the two vehicles. Suppose we are saying center to center, so uh, a vehicle is crossing at a particular time period uh, at a instance of this second and then the second vehicle is pass passing through that particular point in space at, at, at what, what time. So th those if you, uh, th that time difference will give you the time headway, right. So now time headway if you see I already told you the time headway may vary depending on the traffic flow condition. So suppose you are travelling through a peak cover situation where you are, there are too many vehicles. So your time headway is what more or less it will be less right. So there will be uh, what I can say there will be more denser package of vehicles right. So, uh, so your uh, so your uh, time headway will be very less right so there will be interaction between vehicles and your time headway will be very less so now based on the field observation it was seen that this kind of compact nature of uh, variation actually leads to normal distribution actually it is followed some kind of normal distribution so it is based on the field observations and they checked that what is the type of distribution it follows so they found that it is nearly following normal distributions whereas in the low flow conditions where there are uh, like free flow conditions in the morning period where whenever there are less traffic so it's a kind of free flow condition so there are no interaction vehicle is passing at almost uh, what a, a driver is desired so it is actually uh, uh, passing through uh, using his desired speed right so in those situations actually it is kind of random distribution it is following right so it is following some kind of negative binomial which is called a random distribution right and then some kind of intermediate states whenever we are transitioning from free flow to from free flow to congested flow there would be some kind of transition period where vehicle number is increasing but it is not too much and it is not too less so in those case we can use some kind of intermediate headway state which is following some kind of Pearson type 3 distributions and because uh, the vehicle are constantly increasing so there will be many uh, 
different kind of states that that will be generated at the particular instance and based on that there are uh, there are different distributions are there right so now density already i told that uh, the number of vehicles can be uh, how many number of vehicles can be accommodated per segment of a load suppose per 1 km there are at a particular instance 100 vehicles so 100 vehicles per km is the density of that particular road so what is jam density jam density means there are maximum number of density as threshold has been reached so there are uh, maximum suppose 200 vehicles that can be accommodated at a particular uh, 1 km of stretch and that's called the density the jam density right what is called the optimum density here optimum density refers to such densities where flow is not zero so in case of jam density because there are so many packed of vehicles your traffic your average speed of that stream almost reaches to zero right like there are no flow no vehicle can pass it is like there are stop and going stop and going stop and going right so but in case of optimal density so it's not the highest density it is somewhat intermediate density at what density your flow is maximum right so suppose you have you have only two three vehicles are flowing so what is your flow flow is number of vehicles that can be passed at a particular point nearly in one hour so suppose in one hour there are only three vehicles so your flow is only three uh, suppose there are at 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 another day at a particular at that time only so suppose there are maybe 20 number of vehicles that are passing right and maybe jam density is 60 so now they are actually it is increasing your number of vehicles are increasing so how so what is the maximum number of flow so after suppose 30 vehicles has been passed so it is reaching to the jam density so now what happens there will be more interaction and there will be less vehicle that that will be passed at that particular uh, particular uh, point right so that is called the optimum density now space headway is the just the same concept as we discussed in the time headway so what is the time difference or the distance between the two vehicles when it is traveling on a traffic stream right so that is called the space headway. and actually there are relationship that is available between uh, space as well as the time headway, right? so then we comes to the space flow density uh, relationship so which is you already know it is a famous equation q which is called the flow it is k into v k is the density of the traffic stream v is the uh, speed of the traffic stream and k is the flow of the traffic stream. flow is vehicle per hour whereas k is vehicle per kilometer into kilometer per hour is your uh, uh, speed so then it remains is vehicle per hour so uh, so your q, q equal to kv it is the fundamental uh, traffic flow or speed flow density relationship right so i think it is discussed in detail uh, so i will not go that to what is the speed density what is the speed flow uh, those relationships are there uh, so your green bag and those models right so in case of modern free flow maybe we will discuss it later not right now and also it is discussed that how your location influences your speed flow curve so I think you remember uh, there is a section that what is the importance of location. So suppose your some locations having a capacity of C, another location is capacity of C minus 10, right? So now if the same traffic demand is of is there in both of these roads, so actually their behavior or speed flow behavior or speed flow curve will change because the capacity is less. In one case it is less, one case it is slightly more, right? So these are the things that has been discussed and uh, rest I think uh, some green bar green shield models are remaining and as well as the multi regime models which maybe we can see the uh, numerical uh, examples which are there right and then maybe we can discuss there little bit right. So now uh, actually uh, I have talked uh, until this time now I think uh, it is time for you also to interact so maybe we can start with this question and maybe i expect some of the answers in the chat box right is it accept or reject that what is what do you mean by 30th peak hourly volume 
so is it that the hourly topic uh, hourly traffic that will exceed only 20 times in a month so is it true or false what is the 30th hour peak hourly volume 30th peak hourly volume it is there in the ppt i think if you can try then maybe i i, I will again discuss you try you try it i also may want to give you some clues i think this kind of graph where this represents 30th hour traffic volume right this is starting from zero for each this period right so what do you mean by 30th peak hourly volume is that hourly traffic that will exceeds only 20 times not in a month but at a calendar year right so it's like that that this traffic it only exist oh, actually sorry actually this is not the correct graph the correct graph is this rather so now we consider this as a 30th peak because if you see this is actually the peak peak traffic right this is the traffic so traffic and this is the hourly uh, volumes so this can be you can consider this is the peak here because this is the volume will be more but the fact is we do not want to design a road for the maximum volume right suppose uh, during एनी पूजा इन महाराष्ट्र गणेश पूजा इन वेस्ट बेंगाल दुर्गा पूजा और मे बी इन दिवाली इन नॉर्दर्न स्टेट्स राइट इन इंडिया सो वी मे फाइंड दैट देर आर मच मोर ट्रैफिक वॉल्यूम देन द यूजुअल ट्रैफिक वॉल्यूम बट डू यू वांट टू डिजाइन अवर रोड थ्रू आउट द ईयर फॉर दैट डू यू वॉन्ट दैट इफ यू वॉन्ट देन दैट प्रॉब्लम इज दैट वी हैव टू स्पेंड मच मोर मनी बिकॉज इट्स ए ह्यूज ट्रैफिक राइट so we do not want want to waste uh, money and resources so that's why for the safer side we this is empirically decided right uh, you will find in uh, as, uh, highway capacity manual that is developed in us as well as i think indian acm also mentioned this right so it is the 30th hourly peak volume and it is false because it should be in a year not in a month because in a month means uh, it will be very problematic during Uh, those festive months right so now the second one is suppose the hourly volume in the east bound and west bound so suppose this is the east bound and this is the west bound so direction is east bound and west bound east bound is 1700 west bound is 2600 so estimate the directional speed factor in the peak direction so this is the same d which we if you remember dd hb equal to d into k into a dt right so i told you this is the directional factor and this is the uh, for that peak that is the factor and this is the a dt right or uh, this is the a dt So now this this is the d. So now you tell me what could be the d d in the peak direction. So what is the peak direction? So this I want some at least answers because it is very straightforward. What is the peak direction? Tell me in the chat box. What is the peak direction? So what is the peak direction? i want some answers at least whoever is there abhishek khanam mohammad which is the peak direction so there are east and west and traffic volumes are there so we want to estimate the directional speed in the peak direction so basically this is the peak direction right 2600 
and directional speed is nothing but 2600 by 2600 plus 1700 so can you calculate and tell me what is the answer at least am i not audible Zero point six. Okay. Okay. Two six zero zero plus one seven zero zero four three zero zero four three zero zero. So what is it? Is point six? Yes, it is point six indeed. Zero point six zero four like that. Okay. So we will move to the next one. So accept reject again. Time headway is directly proportional to the stream velocity. So time headway. So we know the relationship is Q equal to density into speed of the vehicle, right, or velocity of the vehicle. So now we want to see what is the relationship between time headway and stream velocity, right? So this is vehicle per hour. right so if this is vehicle per hour that means suppose in 360 seconds which is 1 hour and suppose the time headway is uh suppose suppose your time headway is t time headway means two vehicles what is the time distance so suppose it is t in seconds right and so total one hour if your time headway is uh, this t seconds between two vehicles so how many number of vehicles are uh, that will cross at a particular time so what happened So am I audible, or do I have some internet connectivity issues? Can you just say that am I audible or not? Okay, okay, thank you. So, uh, so in one hour, so how many vehicles will be passing, right? So the vehicles will cross is time headway is t and three six zero zero by t, right? so it is equal to k into your stream velocity so now you tell me what is the relationship between time headway and uh, your uh, stream velocity is it true or false now tell me i have done everything for you now tell me so now what is the relationship that exist reject because it is inversely inversely proportional not proportional right t and v right it is inversely proportional so right option will be reject so now the next one is which of the following statements is or are false with respect to traffic stream models so traffic stream models means green shield green bark those are uh, uh, single uh, traffic Uh, single traffic design models and the multi design models are ad models and the modified greenberg models right so now which of these following statements is false so you tell me first which, which of the following statements are false first is greenberg model so greenberg means the logarithmic model right if you remember it is a logarithmic model so green uh, green shield is speed and density relationship is linear right green bar is it is logarithmic uh, underwood is your exponential model right then ad is using two kinds of model uh, for free flow there is some kind of model different models and for forced flow or congested flow the model some different models right it is called the two two design models and modified green bar also two design models so now you tell me that which is false and which which statements is true 
in so greenberg model is this uh, 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 b equal to i think b f l n maybe b by k j or something this and here b also means k i think right i think this kind of something formulation is there ha hmm. ah, b by k like that b by k i think this is right b by k b and this is also a but uh, maybe it's b by k so now if you are this k because it is in the denominator and it is the log log of e so if this k is zero then it is your this expression is not existence or it is infeasible right so that's why whenever this k and v relationship k is zero here so if you see your model is this is never touches your this y axis it never touches because there is no feasible solution so there will be no value so whenever k is equal to 0 there has no value so it will tend to zero but it will not ever uh, it will never reach to zero right so that's why it will never touches this axis if you touch that means it is zero as as long so now if you, if you see greenberg model can be used in congested flow obviously it is touching this axis whenever k is equal to kj suppose jam here is suppose it is kj so it is actually working in the congested flow regime but in case of free flow why k is zero means free flow k means density if there are less density means there are less number of vehicles so it is the free flow situation not congested flow right it is a free flow so green ball so it is not false it is true right it is true so now underwood model underwood model does the opposite thing. because it's a exponential model right it is like v equal to uh, vs a e to the power something expression is there right uh, mm, uh it was what it was i think a uh, e to the power k by km or something right so it never touches this x axis it is exponential model it touches but it never touches this x so it won't work in congested flows regime it won't work right it is it will work in free flow and moderately free flow right so underwood model does not represent zero at high concentration right so does not represent the zero yes it does not represent zero at high concentration yes it is does doing the different thing it is does not represent means it never touches this x axis right so that's why it is unable to predict speed at high concentration right so this is also true so now ad ad what he did he used underwood model in free flow so you see greenberg model can be used in congested flow so it is true and underwood model is can be used in free flow here we said that it, it touches means it, it can be used and green bar we can use it congested flow and this is called the ad's model right so actually this is also true so our question was which is the false so actually this is the false statement right obviously the, if these three are true it is obviously false now why it is false if you see it is a modified green bar model right so it did, it do not use underwood model it uses green bar model in congested flow that's true and here actually free flow it uses a cons constant speed model it uses so now if you remember green shield it is like that this is v speed and k so now you say that here it is touches this axis as well as this axis 
so why do you want to go for green bar green under wood ad why what is the requirement we do not have to go for this higher traffic uh, models so why do we want to go uh, for this higher order traffic models right why what do you think because it's uh, it's uh, it's working in both uh, free as well as forced or congested traffic scenarios so why we uh, why do we want that uh, uh, we want for other models because uh, those models are having limitations right uh, under road is something it is working at some places it is not working right then you have a more complicated model like eddies and modified greenbergs but you want the two models uh, for the two or different scenarios so why do you think that we uh, need those models in the first place why what is your assessment i think you you i think you already uh, would have read this uh, green shield so why we need green bar at all so because it's a linear scenario v and k and actually field is investigation reveals that this kind of scenario actually does not matches with the actual field it does not it may be a simple model it may give us some approximate result but actually if you go to the field and measure it will never represent our traffic scenario so that's the fundamental issue in the model right i hope it is clear so let me go to the next one so now i i was mentioning that uh, at low flow conditions how time uh, headway is uh, different uh, it is measuring by some kind of negative exponential then the gamma then the normal right so now what here it is showing that you have to match this with this right so what is the correct negative exponential is for which headway state means time headway states if you uh, clarifying it is a time headway state right uh, yes time headway it is mentioned here so time headway states so can you uh, can, uh, can you say that how it is matching because i already mentioned that if there are low traffic then uh, some kind of uh, uh, some kind of uh means you imagine that if there is low traffic means there is no no interaction between uh, the vehicles so it is a kind of random scenario you can imagine it's a random scenario right if there are too many vehicles like in a congested and so it's not a random scenario it is actually following some kind of uh, some kind of a distribution it is not random at all right and then intermediate i told that there are many distributions which falls under pearson type 3 distributions which is mentioned in the ppt uh, so uh, can i expect some answers from you so 1 c to a okay 1 gamma is c you are saying you are saying this and you are saying to is a okay so actually you are right that negative exponential is basically comes from poisson's distribution which is a random distribution right so what is called the random distribution random means we don't know when the vehicles are coming vehicle are coming in random at a particular intersection it is coming random right so it is called the random and because of the randomness there are no uh, interaction between uh, different different vehicles it is coming random so in case of normal what happens there are known headways and it is very uh, like a like a constrained scenario it is coming that's why it is called the normal and normal is basically constant right constant headway states because if there are too many vehicles so you imagine uh, almost Uh, the headways uh, are constant almost it's not entirely constant but it is almost constant so then uh, what is the third one is the intermediate which is comes under the gamma because it is a type of pearson 3 distribution right 
So now calculate the maximum flow on the road if flow speed density relationship is following this green shield. No, this is green bar actually. Ln. So maximum flow. So you will need to calculate dQ by dV. If you take the derivative and and make it zero, and if you solve it, you will get that what is. So how how do you solve this? So dQ by dK equal to zero. So dQ by dV, if we differentiate, it is 215. Uh, sorry, it is not equal to minus 41 bracket v for log of v. It is 1 by v plus ln v. So this is a partition differential, right? So it is equal to zero. So now if you see your two. 15 by 41 is equal to this is this 1 plus ln v right so it 69.68 okay. maybe i don't know i need to see then wait let me calculate Yes, it will be some kind of sixty-nine point something. Yes. So now you tell me this: if the observed time headway in a one-way homogeneous traffic stream is twelve seconds, one-way homogeneous traffic stream, then which of the following describes the relationship between space mean speed and distance headway? Tell me. Base mean speed. You have to start it from Q equal to K V for obvious, right? But time headway means three six double zero by twelve. Twelve is time headway. It is called the Q. Number of vehicles are passing uh, uh, in a one hour, right? And then your K means if this is in meter, thousand meter by suppose. This is space means uh, space means speed distance headway distance headway suppose is h uh, so number of vehicles can accommodate in one unit of length of road that is one kilometer suppose here so suppose it is one hundred meters and h in h is in meter right because it is given in meters and v is in kilometer per hour so then equal to into v. So now, if you see, twelve. This is three hundred. This is thousand equal to v. So v equal to obviously. This is h point three h, right? This is the answer. So do you understand, or I have to wait? So did you get it? Q equal to kV. Now you have to replace the flow in terms of time headway and density in terms of space headway, because density is closely related to space headway and time is closely related to or uh, time headway, right? And then this is the relationship that you will get. Should I go to the next one? okay so now while traveling along and against the traffic stream while traveling along and against the traffic stream and moving observer measure the relative flows suppose along he measure that 150 vehicles per hour is flow and against suppose he saw the 260 vehicle per hour the average speed of the moving observer while traveling along and against is 40 km per hour and 50 km per hour 
what is the density of the traffic stream so we know that q equal to k into v here we are saying that relative flows so if we are saying that a moving observer measured relative flows means in terms of relative relative velocity we have to consider so this would be relative velocity so now in first case our q is along the traffic stream moving observer is along so moving observer is traveling along the traffic stream so that's why our k is not given k is this into our velocity was 40 but it will be v minus 40 because it is the same direction our vehicles are move, traveling right so if the stream velocity is v then v minus 40 because relative velocity is 40 in the same direction not on the opposite direction whereas yes someone raised his hand you can say whatever you want to say so then for against it will be same density it will be same v but it will be plus 50 because it is traveling on the opposite so if you remember the uh, relative velocities if you travel on this opposite side so it will add up right and in the in the same side it will just subtract relative velocity so now uh, can you solve it and tell me what is the answer you can solve these two equations i have written two equations and so solve it so 50 by 26 equal to v minus 40 by v plus 50 so then 15 into v means 15 v plus 15 into 50 equal to 26 v minus 40 into 26 so then 26 minus 15 means 11 v equal to 15 into 50 plus 40 into 26 so what is this value 15 into 50 plus 40 into 26 so it is coming out 1790 and then it will divided by 11 so it will come 162.72 which is your velocity but we want what we want we want density not velocity this is 162 point something ah, this is velocity now what is the density so now we can use this k so now we know the v v minus 40 so what we can do v minus 40 is 122 so k is 150 by 122 so then it will be 1.2 so your density will be 1.2 so, so is it clear and you raised a hand, Mustak Alam. Do you want to say something? Yes, tell me. Tell me. Do you want to? Do you want to say something? You said yes. Yes. Tell me, bolo kya bolna hai?
ओके ठीक है सो दिस इज द क्वेश्चन नंबर एट सो कोफिशियंट ऑफ वेरिएशन इज ए बेटर मेजर ऑफ स्पीड वेरिएशन कंपेयर टू स्टैंडर्ड डेविएशन सो दिस एक्चुअली आई हैव ऑलरेडी डिस्कस सो आई कैन एक्सपेक्ट सम आंसर फ्रॉम अभिषेक मोहम्मद एंड ऑल इवन मुस्ताक coefficient of variation which is cv okay abhishek tell told the truth why it is true because it may happen that for two different sample sizes our standard deviation may be close right but their mean may be different so if that is so so there is a chance that it will may lead to error so suppose your mean value is 15 here your mean value is 75 here mean speed but your standard deviation is 5 and 5 so if i use this to measure variations we don't know because here speed is very high speed is very low so it is very poor scenario but we may not be able to capture if we only consider the standard deviation so you want to see what is the coefficient of variation so the next one is theoretical speed flow curve so what is speed flow curve let, let us draw the speed flow curve so it is speed it is flow so it is speed flow curve like right? theoretical speed flow curve so is same for two locations having the same traffic demand but different capacity tell me it is saying that for two locations having the traffic demand is same but the different capacity is different it is same is it true or false capacity is different so what what do you think what do you think what will happen hmm what will be the change in speed flow curve falls vm will be more or more capacity the vm will be more uh, that may happen but here if you see this is the capacity point this q is called the capacity at this q it reaches the capacity based on this theoretical curve right at this speed huh? so this is what you called vm so now if this is changes suppose this is less even if the same traffic volume is there it will shape is like this because your capacity has been reduced right? so i think it is clear hmm? okay it should be 10 it is i have written 9 So which of the following statement is false regarding peak cover period considering standard 15 minute analysis period this actually i discussed previously that how that v60 by 4 into v15 right so i hope that you will be able to say that what is false tell me tell me which is which of these options is false theoretical phf cannot be greater than 1 when there is no variation in flow within the hour maximum theoretical uh, phf can be achieved if the entire volume occurs in a single interval then the minimum theoretical phf could be achieved tell me theoretical minimum phf value can be zero which which of which of this statement is false what is phf phf is this is v60 max in peak hour this is for 15 minutes this is 4 into v15 max within that 60 what is the 15 minutes right so now pa cannot be greater than 1 okay so this volume this volume 
can it be greater than this volume in no circumstances it will be more than this volume because it is the one hour volume and within that there is a 15 minute period so maximum volume will be there in the 16 minute period so if this is these two things so it will be more than this in any time and maximum what will happen that it will be equal right this can be equal to this so in that case it will be 1 by 4 so it cannot be greater than 1 right it cannot so if when there is no variation of flow right no variation in flow so what do you mean by no variation in flow means for each 15 minutes there are 4 15 minutes each 15 minutes suppose there are 200 vehicles suppose and total vehicle is 800 in the hour so 4 into 2 is 800 upper is 200 800 then your phs is 1 so maximum theoretical ph value is 1 which can be achieved and it should not be greater than 1 because this volume is anyway this volume cannot be greater than this right so now we if the entire volume occurs in single period so for three different i mean suppose for one 15 minute interval the total uh, volume is happening one means for one hour suppose the volume is 2000 and it is only occurring at a particular 15 minutes right so for rest of the 45 minutes there is no volume suppose it may happen theoretically so the lowest value is 1 by 4 and it is the minimum theoretical pH. Right? so theoretical pH value can be 0 it cannot be 0 this is the minimum value so it cannot be greater than 1 right so this is the false statement because here it is saying that which of the following statement is false considering obviously 15 minute analysis period so for today this is from my side so if anyone is having any doubts or queries regarding anything course content or the questions you are free you can feel free feel to ask you can feel free to ask was the assignment the tell me the other 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 uh, options as well So if this is a false statement and you choose that statement then only they will deduct the mark so did you so what was your answer you choose ah so what you choose hmm hmm So ISO, it was traffic demand or it was transportation demand?
so which of the following is false so your d so first was what first one was effective movements of good that is true then second one it also a objective of traffic engineering no it's true tell me tell me ha it ha means it is false it's not the objective is saying right ha that is that is also true means b is b should be the answer right that is true ha ah, that is true ha ah, so b b should be the answer b and d uh in we it is assignment number 1 so did you get half marks for that okay you should have uh, got uh, full marks for that it, it it should be b only it is not d okay okay you got 0.5 right okay no you should have got uh, one because because uh, uh, because it is false so you, that is not false actually it is a direct movement so maybe or oh, you need to see how to do it so that can be done in later stages maybe i will let them know that uh, in the, that question we should get more 0.5 more marks right hmm hmm No, 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 no. That is a separate thing. You confused. So, land use and transportation cycle is a different thing. Suppose, uh, suppose uh, there is a land to use, and there are some kind of transportation system that is already available there, right? So now, suppose suddenly you improve your transportation systems or something, right? So suppose you build a flyover along a particular corridor, right? Now, what happens? So. your land value will get increased immediately right because you are providing the direct access to those lands which may not be possible earlier or it may be may be they, they are facing difficulty by ex for accessing those things but as you uh, maybe construct a flyover it, it is possible for you or it is very easy for you to reach to this destinations so now your land value is increased and more and people more and more people are either try to reside there or maybe they are opening the uh, suppose commercial complexes there so now what happens so there are more traffic that is in induced on the road so now even if flyover is uh, not sufficient to accommodate that traffic so now you may maybe want to uh, build another flyover or you may want to some, do something else so you need more transportation facilities so your land use changes your transportation requirement changes immediately so that's what that means and here what we meant by transportation demand is a derived demand is that suppose you want to travel to the right for suppose school or suppose going for college or suppose going to work so why you want to travel actually for reaching to school or for study or for doing something else right it is not that you are uh, traveling for the purpose of traveling in most cases even if it is a leisure activity you want to go somewhere and enjoy so that that is the purpose for your traveling right so it is not a direct demand it's a derived demand right so transportation demand is not for like you in most cases you will not see people are saying that no i am just roaming i am just roaming it is not for but even if you are just roaming maybe you are roaming for relaxation so you can imagine 
so it is a derived demand it's not a direct demand you want to go to work that's why you want to go for place a to b that's why you need to travel so that is called the transportation demand right so in that way it is a derived demand i think you got the idea yes so anything more from anyone of you if no then we may end the session right so if it is all right then we will meet in the next week right with the next module okay then bye